April 30th, 2021. Doomsday. Actually, no, it's not doomsday. It's actually just the end of the Broken Fang operation. So let's talk about what you can do to prepare for this and how you should go forward with your Broken Fang investments. Before that, though, a quick word from our sponsor, Skinport.com. Skinport is a beautiful site with a minimalist UI allowing you to surf the hundreds of thousands of items they have offered and find the lowest prices, even lower than the Steam Marketplace. So if you want to go ahead and check them out, use the link in the description below. They also recently updated their fees, so they actually are very friendly for buyers, and that's a great thing to see, so be sure to check them out and buy a few skins. Thanks. So the Broken Fang operation has come and given us a lot of new techniques for star purchases and star usage, but now it's coming to an end and it's leaving on April 30th, so this is the video to basically explain how you should go forward with your investments, the different types of investments that you may have made, and how you should go forward with them in the future. I'll waste no time and get right into it. We're starting off with the Blue Phosphor, one of the more popular items because not only is it easy to get in low floats to trade up for the Op Fade, but it also just looks really good on its own, and it's a pretty popular investment overall, especially for a pink. So with the Blue Phosphor, this is actually a pretty pretty interesting skin because it's actually risen quite a lot during the operation, which was a little unexpected, but a little bit expected at the same time as well. It rose up to almost $300, which was absolutely insane considering you could have got it for around $170 during the operation, so pretty big profit margins there. And right now it's actually doing really good, definitely above its usual price of around $180 that it was for the majority of the operation. Now Shattered Web and Broken Fang are pretty similar operations, and by extension they're probably going to see pretty similar trends for the most part. A good model of the trend for Shattered Web is probably the Desert Eagle Emerald German Gunder, one of the really popular investments from that operation. And as you can see, it went from around $60 up to over $100 in its big rise. That was kind of the big thing to look for on the Emerald German Gunder, and once it happened, it kind of stabilized around that area. For Broken Fang holders, is going to be the same sort of rise you're looking for, about a 40% increase on your Blue Phosphor. Could be more, could be less, more likely less because of the higher quantity that Broken Fang had, but you never really know. If the Op Fade retains its popularity, we could also see a Negev Mjolnir type of trend, or around doubles in price. I'm expecting more of an Emerald Jormungandr type of trend because of the quantity increase that Broken Fang saw, and because there are two pinks that are available to trade up to the Op Fade, but again, if the Op Fade retains popularity and does gain sort of a god tier status, it could definitely see more of a Negev Mjolnir type trend, or even more. So if you do plan to hold the Blue Phosphor, that's the type of stuff that I would look for trend-wise, but if you are looking for something like a 20% increase and that happens, then definitely take the profit and move on it's going to be profit at the end of the day so as long as you make it move on with your day find something else and you're good to go now for those of you that are a little bit more of hipsters and chose something a little bit less mainstream then you obviously went with something like the pantera anka or a different pink from a different collection these are still good choices and you're probably going to see a very similar trend to the blue phosphor just because your pinks and your main goal is to trade up to something that's a little bit better than the pink from one of the broken pink collections but what you're going to see is an increase that is not going to be as drastic or is going to be more drastic if we mirror this with shattered web we have the Flame Jormungandr, the Emerald Jormungandr, and the Astral Jormungandr. If we mirror this to Broken Fang, we obviously have the Blue Phosphor being something like the Emerald Jormungandr trend line, but if we go ahead and analyze the other pinks, those are either going to end up on the Flame Jormungandr side of things or the Astral Jormungandr side of things. That's why I originally recommended the Emerald Jormungandr between the three. Even though the Flame Jormungandr saw a little bit stronger price trend, it had more risk associated with it because it was a little bit more of an unknown and there weren't as many factors associated with it. It's the same reason why I didn't recommend the Astral Jormungandr because more risk and obviously a little bit less strong price trend. The Amber German Gunder was perfect because it had the safest chance of a trend, and obviously it did have a pretty strong one in the middle. So that's why for the Broken Fang Pinks, I say it could be more or less. It's either going to be a Flame German Gunder or an Astro German Gunder. Worse than the Blue Phosphor because it's more stagnant, or better than the Blue Phosphor because the edgier factor gives it more height. So that's how I'm expecting the Pinks to go, nothing too crazy. Moving on to the Grays, another really popular thing because you can just sort of mass buy them and then wait for a minor increase and make a lot of money off of that. For the Grays, it's nothing too complicated. You're basically just going to want to find out how much you need to make after fees in terms of how much profit you're looking for. It can really just be any sort of amount that you think is acceptable and wait for the grays to hit that sort of margin, say that certain price in the Steam Marketplace, and then just mass sell them and take whatever profit you get. So say I buy some grays for 10 cents each and they end up going up to 20 cents each. If I'm going to sell those, I'm going to be paying a fee of 2 cents per gray, which means I'm going to end up taking away 8 cents per gray. Keep in mind, grays are pretty hit or miss. You're either going to make a lot of money on them or not so much money at all, and so you're just going to have to hold on to them and see where they kind of go. I'm expecting at least a two times return. And that sort of applies to all greys. The most popular one seems to be the MP9 Army Machine, but there are other greys and they probably will follow a similar trend. Alright, now for something a lot weirder and a lot crazier and a lot more controversial, and that's the, going to be the Op Fade. Now the Op Fade is very much up in the air, it's very much an enigma of an item because it's not really too confirmed how this is going to perform in the future. People might really end up liking the skin down the line and then it gains a lot of popularity and 
than a lot of price by extension, or it could end up just being sort of a more in the shadows type thing where it kind of just stabilizes in price and doesn't rise too much. At this point, it's kind of impossible to tell. People are going to interpret it down the line, but the prospects do look pretty good. It is a fade skin and it is on an op, which is obviously two very popular things. We saw the Gungnir gain a lot of popularity down the line and by extension, a lot of price. So something similar could happen with the op fade. Maybe not as big as the Gungnir because the Gungnir does seem to be a lot more popular, but the op fade could still see some really nice stuff. In terms of how much I think it's going to go up, I could say that there's going to be pretty much at least a 20 or 30% increase on the op fade's price, but we don't really know for sure. And this one is really odd and it's hard to tell how people are going to interpret it down the line. But that's kind of something we're just going to have to kind of wait for. Let's move on to stickers, especially the Battle Scarred Hollow and maybe the Foil. The Battle Scarred Hollow and the Foil are probably going to be your best bets. The other Hollows are just not that great in general, and the Papers just not that great either. Definitely going to be focusing on the Battle Scarred Hollow and also that Foil. So the Battle Scarred Hollow obviously is the most popular one right now and is also the most expensive sticker from the stickers that are offered from Broken Fang. And I think the Battle Scarred Hollow is going to do pretty decent in the future. I could see it holding the same sort of trend as the Lambda Hollow, where it kind of has a pretty solid price for a long time, small increases here or there, and then just kind of stabilizing. I definitely could see some decent price growth in the future for the Battle Scarred Hollow, though. It's a very good looking one. Kind of hard to say what's going to happen down the line. Obviously, a lot of stickers do stagnate in price, so that could, of course, happen with the Battle Scarred Hollow. It may or may not happen. We'll have to see once it does, you know, get down there and once more time is able to increase its price or even decrease its price. I could see a two times increase, three times increase, or even a four times increase would not be that shocking on this item because it is a sticker and it does depend on how much hype it has down the line. Do think it's going to do pretty well though. As for the foil, I'd say honestly it's pretty underrated. The gold foils tend to be pretty popular with the community, especially because of that crown foil hype, and as long as the crown foil stays in a pretty popular demand with the community, I think this gold foil does have at least some sort of a fan base that can keep it going. I could see some decent price increases on this, but I would mostly expect probably a 2x increase. Again, stickers are pretty weird because they can stagnate and just have a pretty stable price for the rest of their lifetime, but again, there could be some pretty nice events that could make the prices skyrocket, so it all really just depends how time plays out for these items. As for the other stickers, the only two that are really of any noteworthy mention are going to be the Battle Scarred Non-Hollow because it does have the same sort of simplistic minimalist effect to it, and also the other sticker collection with those weird golds that have a few of those meme picks, and those are basically just going to be meme picks. If the meme is pretty high in popularity, they're going to rise in price. If the meme is not so high in popularity, they're not going to do so good. And as for the Battle Scarred Non-Hollows, those are probably going to follow a pretty similar trend to the Battle Scarred Hollows, because they're sort of a cheaper option to get the same sort of minimalist feel but without the hollow so I could say these are probably going to be a little bit less and that about covers it for stickers let's move on to agents now agents are an interesting one because a lot of people seem to like them but in my opinion I just don't think they're a good solid choice obviously with the older agents from Shattered Web those really just saw a pretty poor price trend for the most part and actually really decreased in value over time with these new broken fang agents there aren't really a lot of noteworthy ones other than the one that has like the changing mask design and then also the of course meme pick the number K for those of you that are holding on to number K as a meme pick. Basically, the short explanation for that is that memes increase when memes are popular. If there's a meme that's popular for number K, then it's probably going to have an increase on its price because more people are interested in getting in on the meme. Memes are pretty powerful, and I did make a recent video about that, so if you want more information on number K and meme investing, that's also going to be a video that I have available, so go check it out. And as for the mass changing guy, he just simply looks pretty cool. He's a good player model. He's sort of like Dr. Romanov, a very unique player model to have, so if he does have any popularity or does gain any popularity for agents in general, that's going to be the one that probably gains value. In general though, agents have shown to be a pretty poor choice and don't really have as much ROI as other investments you can make, so that's basically going to be the general sense for agents. If you don't have the mask guy or number K, then your fate is probably not so good. So guys, it's going to basically end this video. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like below and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you invested in Broken Fang, let me know what you bought below and what you are expecting to get out of it. And those are basically going to be my predictions for the projections and when you should probably sell your items off. And if you guys are interested in more content like this, of course, I have a Discord server and a Twitter, and I also have a skin port link that you can use to support me. So thanks for all of that. See you guys next time. Peace.